Hey everyone, this is Chris, and I'm going to do something a little bit different today. Uh, obviously, we're all cooped up because of coronavirus scares, and maybe that means you're looking for a new game to play. Uh, this one actually has one of the coolest design elements that I think I've ever experienced in a cooperative game, uh, and I kind of just want to show it off. So this is, you can't recognize all of this art, God of War, the card game, uh, published by, I think, Cool Mini or not, weirdly enough. There's no minis in here or anything like that. Uh, it's just a card game. It's a deck builder. Every round, I'm going to add a new card to my deck, get a little bit stronger. And my goal is to complete this scenario. Uh, normally, in a full game, I would be working my way through a pyramid of boss fights. Uh, starting with the first boss, moving on to the second boss, and up until a final boss. Uh, and each of those bosses has a scenario card that has consequences for not fighting them. So as you work your way up, you accumulate consequences, and everything gets a little bit harder, in addition to the fights getting more complicated. Uh, but for this video, I'm just going to do one boss fight, and I'm going to show off the solo mode, which is why I have Kratos, Mimir, and Atreus over here on the side. Um, they all each obviously have multiplayer modes, and I think you play up to four players. But I haven't actually tried that, so don't, don't quote me on how this works. Anyways, uh, the thing that I think is really rad about this game is that every boss fight is represented by this tableau of cards, which perfectly aligns as long as nobody touches the table ever. Uh, and I'm probably going to be OCD and fidget with about a hundred times before <laughs> the video is over. Uh, but each one of these cards has something different. Uh, the main thing that some of these have that you're looking out for is enemies. And there's three of them in this scenario. There's this sort of poisonous shaman figure in the front here two sort of icy monsters in this column right here, and two special spaces over in the corners, these fire piles. This scenario, the Helheim scenario, I have to defeat all the enemies without letting the fires go out, or I'll freeze to death. And as different things happen in this scenario, the cards are going to flip, and the scenario is going to change. Uh, in this particular scenario, there's only a couple flips that might happen. Fire piles go empty, they flip. Uh, and once I've defeated this initial wave of enemies, everything else flips into a second side. All the different scenarios play out a little bit differently. Some of them have enemies that flip immediately and do different things. Some of them have enemies that just sort of constantly flip back and forth. Uh, some of the final bosses have a second layer of cards that goes on top of the first that then get removed as conditions are met so that the scenario can evolve more and more. And so that's the goal. We need to deal with all of these enemies before they have dealt with me. Uh, and I'm just gonna sort of get to it. Uh, I have this lovely cheat sheet here, which has the round structure and all the rules, which I might have to refer to because I don't play this game that often but hopefully not too much. And I don't really want to bog down this video with too much discussion of the rules. Okay, so I'm gonna start here in this column with the Poison Shaman for round one. Uh, I apparently only have ranged attacks, which is interesting. Uh, so I'm gonna activate Atreus' special ability to make a ranged attack that lets me target any two enemies in the scene. I want to put as much damage on this witch as possible, and I might also want to put damage on this enemy here. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. So I'm going to use these cards to boost. It's going to be a plus five ranged attack against both of these enemies. And I'm gonna roll the enemy die and see how much they absorb. I rolled it off camera, but it landed on zero. So that's five on each. 
Now, unfortunately, if I activate the Shaman with this F looking rune here, all these enemies are gonna heal. So I might get attacked more than once. Uh, but the goal, of course, is not to let that happen as much as possible. Hmm. So I'm going to make another ranged attack, this time using a card. Boost my rage up the tracker. Gets me a little bit closer to activating Kratos' ability. Uh, add three and plus one from this split card. So for four, targeting the shaman again. Uh, I'll use Atreus to make it plus three. So it's a seven damage attack. And I'll use Mimir's ability to add the result of this defense die instead of subtracting it. Uh, it's a pretty common support ability in the card pool. And it's really nice if you roll a big number, like two. So that ends up being nine. Uh, I'm, I'm short by one. Uh, I can't do anything about it. <laughs> Okay, well, a pretty good first turn. I have defensive cards. None of the fires are out. And in my turn, I reveal a card for the market, which also tells me what is going to activate. And so we're gonna activate this fish looking rune. It removes a fire from this pile. And at the end of the round, there's another one. Activate this X rune is the enemy that I defeated there and this. Uh, so I am going to use this card to defend. Only block one of the damage and I, I don't have a boost for the other half. But this special ability is going to do one damage back to this enemy. And that is all I got. Move to the market phase. I get to pick one of these cards to add to my deck. I think at this point I want this plus four, uh, even though I can't combine it with anything else. And it goes on top of my deck, so I'm guaranteed to get that card for the next round. Start the next round, draw back up to my hand size of seven, and now we hope I have a bunch of cards that will allow me to do some of this. Also, I just got a notification on my work laptop that I'm gonna ignore because I hope it's not super important. All right, so let's use this and the plus four. So I'm gonna use this to make a melee attack, boost it by four. I do get one rage for making the attack. And I'm targeting this poisonous shaman. It's gonna defend two, but still take two, which is enough to clear out the shaman. assume actually that all these enemies will die once I have dealt enough hit points to them. But we shall see. All right, gonna move over here. Get to do that once per round. Uh, make a melee attack, plus one, generating another rage. Uh, so that's three, five, and I can't boost with either of these, so five. Uh, we're hoping for one or less on this die, which is two thirds chance. Zero, easy enough. I have cleared all of the basic enemies. This is a pretty fast game in many of the scenarios, but it you know depends a little bit on how lucky you get, how complicated the objective is. All right, so here now is the boss. I am not going to attempt to pronounce that name. Massive thing here, holy crap. <laughs> All right, glad I flipped that when I have no cards left in my hand and no movement left to do. Uh, there is a poison shaman still up there who I would like to defeat. Um, bu -bu 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 so if I stand here, I can take three damage from the big guy, and I can take three damage plus possible poison from the shaman. Uh, but that's ranged, so it's gonna target me no matter where I go. I already moved, so I don't actually have a choice unless I wanna use a special ability. 
I mean, I could make a one damage attack, which is probably not worth it. Uh, except the card is going to go to waste otherwise, so I might as well make a one damage attack. Alright, one of 25 down. Save this defense, end my activation. Uh, we're going to activate X. Well, that is going to hit me for three, except I'm going to block two of it with this defensive card. So I'll take one. And end of the round, reveal another one. It is the fish. Uh, that is the poison shaman. It's going to hit me for three. And unfortunately, give me one of these poison cards. Um, poison is going to go on top of my deck. Every time I draw it, I'm going to take one damage, discard it, and draw another card. So it doesn't affect the quality of the draws in my deck. It just hurts a lot. And it goes straight up on the top. Uh, I have to decide which of these I want. This all players draw one card is pretty useless in solo. So I'm going to take the plus three. Three cards left in my deck, and I know one of them is poison, unfortunately. So I have to reshuffle, draw back up. Four, five, six, seven. Oh no, a poison, ouch. Uh, so actually I'm half dead at this point. <laughs> uh, hopefully we can prevent some damage or get in enough attacks to trigger the healing before I get destroyed. I'm gonna make a really big ranged attack targeting this shaman and I'm gonna hope. So first action, we're going to move over there. I'm going to start a ranged attack with this. I have plus three. Uh, I have plus three, so that's six. Would be enough for anything but two or five. I could burn another plus three, but all that really gets me is protection from... Uh, let's use this one, which has a plus one option on the side. So one rage for making the attack. Anything but five on this die will kill the poisonous shaman. That is dead. All right, so that's one less thing I have to worry about. Uh, I already moved. So let's use the Mimir ability to move back. I'm gonna oops, swing in for a plus five attack. I'm at my max rage, so next round I can trigger it to do some bonus damage and get some healing, as well as refresh the solo character support abilities. So minus one, that's four. Just 20 more to go before the fires die. Uh, and fingers crossed, because this could be real bad. Oh, I should have one fewer fire here because I revealed the fish last round and I forgot. All right, we've got an X, uh, which is me getting attacked for three. I have two defense, so I'll take one damage up to six out of 10. Uh, and the second card is this fish, uh, which removes a fire and flips it over. So now I gotta, gotta start some fires again. Uh, normally at this point, I would take heal yourself by four because that card is really good in solo, 40% of my health. Um, but I need to put the fire back before I die. So we're gonna take this ranged attack, which I'm gonna use to you know, kindle the fire a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. So first things first, I'm gonna activate my Spartan Rage ability. Add three to my next attack, heal three damage, and refresh all my ally abilities when I do it. So there's that attack. Uh, I'm just gonna pump basically all the boosts I have into it, because the rest of the cards are going to be for protection uh, and kindling up the fire again. So that's a total of plus seven. Reduced by two. So we are at 10 of 25 on this big old ogre. Use my move to move over here into the column with the fire, and I'm gonna spend one, two attacks in order to kindle that back up. 
And before I forget, I activated my Rage ability. So I should have done three more damage. Just about as good at rules in this game as I am in Lord of the Rings, but probably even worse because I'm not as familiar. This also refreshes all of my solo support characters. I just have a defense left, so move on. Uh, we're gonna activate the X, so we get punished for three again. I'll block one. Um, and one more, activate the Trident Rune. Remove one of this, and one damage to all heroes. So back to five. I'll take this, because I really like this. Play one and double it. Very nice. All right, one, two, three, four, reshuffling. Might get poisoned again. Still halfway dead. This time I don't, I don't have my ultimate ability ready to go. Five, six, seven. Ooh, perfect. All right, uh, first things first. I'm gonna kindle up this fire a little bit. I'm going to move here. I'm gonna play this card I just got that plays a single boost card and doubles its value with this plus four that can't be played with anything else. So this is gonna be an eight damage attack. Um, and I'm gonna use the Mimir special ability again to make the defense die add to my attack instead of subtracting. So maybe I'll get lucky and I'll get five and we'll just be done. Uh, one, so a total of nine. Actually, all right, so 22 out of 25. I already killed that, so I might as well just make this attack. Uh, so here's a ranged attack. Should have two rage because the other attack triggered one. Add plus three, add plus two. So five damage ranged attack. Anything but a five. All right, well, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but I, I rolled the five. All right, so that's all I got. I just have a defense here and a plus three boost there. Maybe I should have used the plus three and guaranteed my victory, but I didn't think about it. All right, so we activate the trident. We Knock the fires down one more time. One more damage on Kratos. And we activate the F rune, uh, which is going to flip this fire to empty. And the big guy is gonna attack this space and this space, but I'm not in either of those spaces, so I am fine. Discard my last card. Uh, wait, nope. I, I get to pick one of these first. Uh, I'll take draw two. That's that's just straight bonus economy. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. See, did I get my poison? I did get poison. Ouch. Uh, so that is me at seven of 10. I have to win this round or I will lose, basically. All right, let's use this card. I just got to draw two cards. You can't see it, but just there. And we just want to make the biggest attack that I can possibly make. So here's melee attack plus two, four, six, uh, seven. Once again, anything but five. All right, well, that's a five. So I'm going to do two damage. Uh, bringing me to 24 out of 25 health. Uh, I can still make another attack, and I do have Atreus's boost. So we're going to do that. Make this melee one. Use Atreus for plus three. So it's a four damage attack. I get another rage. Two more damage. 
That's enough to bring me to 26 out of 25. And that is the end of this boss fight in God of War, the card game. Uh, maybe not the best example of the sort of flipping mechanic because we didn't end up flipping very much. Though you can see how a scenario that starts out with a handful of enemies and a healer flips into this big old boss fight with a huge stompy giant based on Norse mythology. So I'm, I'm assuming that's a frost giant of some sort. And it, it can get pretty precarious, right? It's hard to mitigate as much damage as you might like. And the only healing ability that Kratos has by default is, is this rage ability. I guess Mimir has one to heal too, but I, I always want to use it to try and get a little more damage. Anyways, that was fun. I actually really like this game as a solo experience. Uh, the non-solo version of the characters are also really interesting because they each have their own different special ability. Uh, Mimir is a head that doesn't fight or do anything on his own because that's how he is in the latest God of War game. So he attaches to a character and plays a bunch of support cards like the, the purple heals and draws that you saw. Atreus focuses on range damage. There's a pair of characters, dwarf brothers, that you control two figures and they each fight. You can lose one of them halfway through. Um, honestly, I think it is a really slick design. The cards are simple and straightforward, but there's a lot of complexity baked into these different tableaus, especially the higher level bosses uh, and the abilities though, you know, mostly straightforward, give each character a little bit of a different play style and a different feel. All right, everyone. Enjoy all the time you're spending home alone thanks to coronavirus. Or, you know, with your kids who are probably preventing you from getting any work done. <laughs> thanks for watching.